Morning. Welcome to, uh, Chris tries to find good lighting. Oh, no. Man, that'll work. It's early. It's almost six o'clock right now. And we're going up to the lake. Me and Ken are going to hit Lake Michigan for something. Might be coho if they're there. Might be suckers if the coho aren't there. I'm going to try to catch something. Brought a couple different rods and uh, some different gear. I'm freaking tired. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get some caffeine in me and get moving. It's kind of cold out. It's probably like 30 degrees, which isn't that bad, but it could be bad when you're out on the pier and just sitting in it and can't warm yourself up. So we'll see how that goes. I might actually take some hot hands. You know what? I'm going to take some hot hands. I might put my bibs on. Why don't I do that? Yeah. No, I don't know. I'm gonna try to wake up and we'll see you guys on the water. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that. Added flavor. That one. Nice! <laughs> Grab the net. Get that, get that little kid <laughs> swear to God. We'll take his son fishing, his son will always. Get the... There, I heard the dolphin already. <laughs> Here's a little bit bigger. Make sure to step on every rod on your way over. <laughs> Scoop! <laughs> that one would be close. I don't know if that's deep. Worth a measure. That'd be close. You might not make it. Um, can I get a judgment? It's fucking good to me. Keep it. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. Just barely, but it's a keeper. Yeah. He's Four, 14. Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. That's a keeper. That's a good one. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna get him up. Oh, <laughs> fall. By not falling, that's for one. Probably got some good hooks in them. That's a keeper for sure. Hang on, I'm working them. Got him. Yes. <laughs> I think he'll fly. <laughs> if, that, if that one was a keeper, this one's definitely good. <laughs> well, I don't got bait on this one, so that could be why I'm not getting. That's a keeper. Yeah. That'd go 14. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. One. <laughs> Think he'll be good right here? I'm going to kill him first. It's in the mire bag. You just said you were going to move the <laughs> wagon. What do I do? Should I gut him and cut the head off? I'm going to gut him and cut the head off. Well, oh, it has slowed down quite a bit. I got a bunch of people behind me, so I'm not gonna talk too loud. But Ken left. 
this is Northwest Indiana fishing. When most people think about it, this is what they think about. Coho, maybe going out on a boat on Lake Michigan, going for kings, whatever, steelies. Fishing places like this, fishing break walls and just sitting and waiting. Not a whole lot of skill to it, really. You can sit here and chuck lures if you want, but at the end of the day, it's just whether or not one's coming by or not. So, I got one. Feel bad, kind of didn't get into one. I'd like to get two to make a meal out of. I got plans. I think, uh, I think coho, rice pilaf, and mushrooms. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Coho are probably our best eating fish up here. They're uh, not huge. They don't get huge, huge as far as salmon go, but they're delicious. Nice uh, pink, not very red meat. And uh, yeah, keep watching these lines and try to get into one more, make a meal with Ken and yeah. I think if I don't get into one, I gotta come back tomorrow. That's just kind of how, it, how it's gonna shape out, I think. I might need a measurement on that one. You got tape on you? You got tape, man? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's on 14. Nice. Dude, I can't. They're, mine's hitting the water, and they're hitting it right away. I don't think I could even do two rods if I wanted to. <laughs> one. <laughs> Work? Yeah, 14 and an eighth. <laughs> hey, I got you, man. Right there. He's fat. Ooh, stick. In. It'd be Tape close. Measure, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, he's like in. You'll probably be able to get your hook back out of him. He's going the wrong way. Look at this guy. That looks small. <laughs> chaos, man. It's chaos. I love this. You like this? Oh, on the, on the log. Got him. That's plenty. Oh, yeah. You're good. <laughs> Got him. Uh, maybe. But he'll fly. He'll fly. Yeah, I think you need to measure that one. We got two in. They got three or four it's chaos can barely clean the fish or prep the fish before i get another bite i think i'm getting another bite now maybe it's a good day it's way better than yesterday this is awesome oh oh got him
I think I got him. That one's gonna need a measure. Close. Oh, that's way over. That's sure? pretty good. I wouldn't even measure it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's closer to 16. Okay. Well, he's also already bleeding, so he's mine now. <laughs> oh, yeah. 15 and a half. He's like 16 almost. Nice. Like that. Sweet. Thank you, sir. <laughs> So he wanted that. Look at that. Both hooks just gone. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get those back. Dude, I'm at three, and the guys that we fished with yesterday are at five. It, and I've been here 25 minutes. <laughs> like I'm almost like like I I know you can't get away, but I'm like, man, I will sit here with my wagon, stop fishing, hold the spot. You come here and limit out. <laughs> Yeah, but for five fish. Still on? He's running at you. I don't know. This is this is what we needed yesterday. So, dude, they're both on right now. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get off the phone so I can help him. <laughs> Bye. That, that, that one will fly, that's yeah, fat. Mine's a little. Oh, really? Uh-oh. I think he'll fly. Oh, yeah. Come on, bud. Got him. Uh, what do we got, Alex? I think you're at seven. What are you using? Crawlers? It's, they're using skiing. I've got, I call it the surf and turf, shrimp and a crawler. Yeah, I got shrimp too. I hook them up, I got these rigs. It's like a crawler harness. Okay. So I just got two hooks. I thread the shrimp on here, put it there, then hook the worm at the tip and the tail. It was like a wall. Throw a wave, work. yeah. They work. But these guys are just using a single hooks. I got hooked up on a rock. <laughs> You need you need weights or I mean, we got what do you got? One ounce. Yeah. What are you guys doing better on shrimp? If we're both catching, he's caught more than I have on skiing, but I mean I'm still catching them on shrimp and crawlers. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, no problem, man. Oh, dude, I had one on the whole time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> My line was slack. <laughs> yeah, he's 14 for sure, man. I oh, appreciate it. Yeah, man. no problem. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? One more? Yeah, one more. I know I need to get my gimbal. You mind taking a picture for me? So I have a picture just like that that's a live photo. <laughs> it's fantastic. I'll see if I can find it. Oh, God, I can't stop, man. <laughs> Got him. He feels small though. Ah, oh, just I lost him right here, dude. Here? Yeah, I saw him. I don't even want to put it in the holder. <laughs> dude, that's what I just stopped setting it down. They were hitting so fast. Everybody getting COVID at that. I had some friends that were there. <laughs>
Nice. Hopefully it's not the same one. <laughs> I don't know, he's close. That's a little guy. That's I don't think he'll go. No, that's little. That's a little guy. I'm having a good try. At least he's right in, my, in the mouth. You don't have to kill it, you know? He'll be fine. Say we'll each oh, go. There you go. Say that again? We'll each go. Okay. Like, we'll each go to the store. I think he came off, dude. The bills in the there yep. There it is. Oh no! No, it's not. Oh, is that him? No, I think that's the one the one of us threw back already. Man, I'm just gonna hold the rod. <laughs> no, I don't know if that's the one I threw back or the one he just threw back. Yeah, no. I don't think mine died. And uh, so we we're, we're going for. Got him. That's what that's what they were. It's a good one. It's good. He choked it. Come on. That'll keep. Done. Limited. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that'll keep, right? Yeah. Stop. Stop. You going to shrimp back, man? It all together. Woo! That was awesome. All right, I don't know how that filmed, but uh, linked up with Alex and Ben, and they uh, limited it out to, we limited it out like a freaking hour, man. So they got their 10, I got my five and uh trying to get buddies to come out because that was freaking wild that's the best coho fishing i've ever had I'm go home and get these guys cleaned up because so i got my five i got my one from yesterday should have some pretty good meals coming up i'm gonna play one with ken and film that so day two way better than day one and uh gonna i don't even know how that footage was i couldn't set my rod down like i would just like fish after fish after fish after fish i tried to text ken try to call him try to take a drink and the rods were going off i had one rod in the water just shows you how it can be some days and it's like man i want to like you know call into work and go tomorrow but like tomorrow could be just like it was yesterday and you know you just gotta be in the right spot come when you can and as much as you can god that's freaking awesome we're gonna cut the cleaning uh hard cut don't fall welcome to the cleaning table uh in all that chaos today i probably forgot to show the rigs um, and probably also yesterday because I'm terrible. So what was I using? So for coho, steelhead, pretty much all of those salmon that come in. There's salmonid species that come into the shores on Lake Michigan. I use pretty much the same rig. It just depends on whether I go top or whether I go bottom. So today what worked was bottom. A lot of times you'll see guys floating skiing, stuff like that. Uh, those were working today too. Using skiing was working. Uh, float rigs were not working today though. Bottom rigs work. So I'm gonna show you what I do for a bottom rig. Uh, pretty similar to my catfish rig with a couple little nuances. So shrimp, nice healthy chunk shrimp. I actually had tiny shrimp because I had to borrow some today. Then rod doesn't really matter. Um, today I was mostly using an eight foot six medium light. I uh, had a nice noodly tip mostly because we were having to lift them up over the rocks. Uh, you really don't need that crazy long of a rod. Uh, the most fun I was having was on a seven foot light. Uh, this is a seven foot medium. Uh, it's also very fun to catch them on. You don't need big honking uh, catfish rods to reel in these fish. If you're going for bigger steelhead, 
you might want to beef up a little bit maybe go with like a 17 pound mono or something but you really don't have to um, so this is just a 10 pound mainline uh, mono it's orange uh, it's actually one of my cat or small mouth setups and then I have a little slide clip on there uh, these things are great for putting your weights on and making sure that you can take them off and put your rods away cleanly without weights bumping into everything and getting all tangled um, also allows you to change your weight a lot easier to a swivel and then I have this is I believe this is 12 pound fluorocarbon that I tied these with and this is actually a crawler harness uh, for walleye so if you've ever heard of a crawler harness uh, you get your curly harness and tie them with fluorocarbon uh, for you northerners um, that's what this is so just a crawler harness with some beads to add a little bit of flash got a little little spinner on there you can change your blades whatever colors you want and then that float that float really helps especially when you know you're at a beach and the current's kind of going back and forth the blade probably isn't doing much <laughs> in, at the beach because that blade's not going to get a consistent spin but i guess it could um and then you got your top hook tied with a knotless knot for you carp guys uh if you ever tied a hair rig uh you know what that knot is if not look it up it's basically a snell knot where you go you tie this one on first so you're going to tie your bottom hook first and then you're going to go up and through that and it's a knotless knot um they're pretty simple i'm not going to do a big uh demonstration right now just because it's kind of hard to see uh and that's on your flare carbon and you want you know it's solid maybe two inches inch and a half of line between those two hooks and then all i'm doing and these are relatively small hooks. I don't remember exactly. I think they're size four, size two. Uh, so what I'm doing, taking my piece of shrimp, and this might even be a little bit too big of a piece, but that's fine. I'm threading it onto the hook. You don't gotta go too crazy. Uh, raw shrimp or cooked shrimp doesn't really matter. I see. I find that raw shrimp stays on the hook a little bit better, but you know, whatever. And you're going to thread it on and you're going to put that shrimp in between those two hooks. You're going to push it past the eye of the bottom hook and get it on there. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow anything that goes for that shrimp to really get those hooks. And then as kind of a stopper, I'm going to get my table all dirty. You're going to take a night crawler and I'm just going to waste a night crawler because it's fine. I might just put him back in after I'm done. You're going to hook him once through the top and then you're going to come down here to the bottom. And you're gonna hook him once, and then you're gonna hook him again. And there you go. So now you have what I like to call the surf and turf, shrimp and a night crawler. And that just kills it for anything. I mean, uh, like I said, steelhead, kings, cohos, um, just kills it. And what I've done in the past is I've actually used just a single bigger, uh, bait hook uh, on a float because you don't really need to use this rig on a float. I guess you could. It's not wrong. Um, but I've put one single hook on a float and then threaded my shrimp on like I just showed you. And then, oh man, I try to save the worm. Uh, threaded the shrimp on and then just put the night crawler on, hooked it a few times like you normally would a night crawler is like a stopper. And that's pretty much it. Uh, other thing, now that my hands are all dirty, one ounce sinker. Uh, perfect for less choppy conditions on Lake Michigan. Um, I like to use these, they're kind of a disc sinker. You can get a bunch of them on Amazon for pretty cheap. And uh, they just kind of hold the bottom a little bit better or I use the pyramids. Those teardrop ones, they kind of roll and sway and kind of mess with the presentation that I'm going for. So I uh, like the disc. If you're getting into some chop, maybe switch to a two ounce, but at that point you want to have a more of a medium action rod because that light action isn't going to really be able to throw the two ounces easily. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to line up my fish that I'm going to clean and uh, we'll show you guys that. I did film cleaning the fish yesterday. Uh, didn't like the way it turned out, so I'm going to clean today and show you guys. I don't know why I told you that. I did end up cleaning a fish yesterday, but now I have a smorgasbord, so I'm gonna show you guys that. So, I'm gonna get that all set up. But yeah, there's the rig. All right, get you guys a little bit better angle. So first and foremost, you don't really need this, but this is a scaling knife. And 
You know, they say there's more than one way to skin a cat. Well, there's probably a thousand ways to fillet or clean rather a coho. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to fillet them, but I'm going to leave the skin on. And these scales really aren't that bad to deal with. Uh, if you were to eat one, it's not going to hurt you. You're not really going to choke on it, but you still don't want a mouthful of scales. So I'm going to do as best I can to try to just get these scales off of there. And you'll find that certain spots on the fish, like up here near the front, a little bit harder to scale than others. And you just kind of do your best. And that helps to turn the fish over so you can come back at the belly. Again, you're never gonna really get them all, but do your best. And you really don't need this fancy knife. You could probably honestly just use the side of a spoon. Uh, and this isn't even a fancy knife by any means. Just something where you know you're not gonna cut through. And it's got two sides. It's just one's like kind of a serrated if I wanted to saw through, but it's still not gonna cut through that skin. So. All right, now that we got the bulk of the scales going, I'm just keeping a bowl of water here since I don't have the hose hooked up. So I can rinse my hands. Now you wanna fillet it. At least, you know, I wanna fillet it. So. While it seems like it would be easier to start up here, I find that it's actually easier to start here near the dorsal. So you can see I've already cut the fish's head off and gutted it. And there we go, we're through. And then just kind of follow that backbone back near the front. And then that gives you something to hold on to start following the fish down and then you can work your way back this way again watch your backbone and for how small these fish are there actually is a pretty good amount of meat on them so you don't need to be perfect you can afford to miss a little bit still don't want to obviously but Just kind of follow that backbone down. And so I actually already broke through, but you can see, maybe you'll be able to hear when I escape my knife. I don't know if you can hear that, but there is a Y bone in these fish, kind of like a pike or a walleye. Um, my knife is very sharp right now, so I just skate right through. But that Y bone, if this was a bigger fish, I might cut it away or even pick it out, which you can do with salmon species. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to be aware of the fact that when I eat this fish, there is going to be some bones in that general area. And usually after you cook it, it kind of just falls away from those bones anyway. I just kind of follow the rib cage down. Really just like filleting any fish. Nothing crazy. And there you go. Nice, beautiful, I'm gonna trim that fin off. But it's a pretty good job there. Didn't really leave much meat on the bone. Trim that, you don't really want Really, this whole area of silver skin could be trimmed. But you definitely don't want to eat that fin. The tissue is going to be pretty dense. Well, there you go. There's your beautiful coho filet. And then what I'm going to do with these, looks like I got a little bit more trimming to do. Uh, that's why I took the scales off, because I'm actually going to cook them with the skin on and actually you can eat the skin and I'll show you guys that plan to do a little cooking video with Ken so when we get to that you'll see that but I got a few more fish to clean and that's pretty much it like I said I'm leaving that Y bone in there just to try to save a little bit of meat and it doesn't really bother me that much yeah so we'll uh, see you guys probably in the kitchen
before we return. Oh, are you waiting for us? Yeah. You both waiting for us? No. Say hi. Mm. Look at it. Is your face? See your face? I'm dead, dead. Yeah. Oh, wait. You want to look at the fish? Yeah. It's a fish. Is it all the fish? Yeah. Oh, you want me back on it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, back at the fish. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Butter. Great lighting. <laughs> nah, you're good. It's more of a joke against myself. You don't need to do anything. <laughs> like, literally, you don't need to do anything. <laughs> Butter. Mushrooms. All of the mushrooms. Butter and mushrooms. Garbage can. Oh yeah, garbage can. Oh, you have a garbage can. Not that garbage can. That garbage can. The guy's more prepared than I thought. And now we wait. And then once those mushrooms are cooked, we will cook the salmon. And hopefully have enough light to film. Oh, you can see me there. Oh, I lost the little screen thing. Great catch a cook video. Girls are inside screaming and yelling and I already got the rice made and uh, mushrooms, salmon, and then we'll eat. So I'll get some shots of the whole salmon cookery. Yeah, this is great. I'm actually really excited. I'm really hungry. My mouth's already watering. This is great. All right, we'll see how good my filming skills are. More butter. Boom. Okay, more butter accomplished. Now, the trick with this salmon is going to be to fry it flesh side down first. I say fry, really saute or pan sear. Let's say pan sear, that sounds better. So you're gonna pan sear, so I got these nice fillets. You got a flesh side and skin side. You wanna go flesh side first. And you're gonna see them shrivel up pretty quick. And you're gonna hurry up and grab all of them. I could do three. Yeah, we'll just do three right now. This is uh, this is really easy to do without my camera guy. Um, okay. So we got. See how clear that is. It's probably not very clear, but we got three salmon fillets on there and what we're gonna do is we're gonna let those sear in a really hot pan turn up the heat a little more so let those sear in a hot pan and then we're going to flip them over on the skin side and we're just gonna let them cook for a while on the skin side because that skin's gonna get nice and crispy and you basically just want to give it a good hot sear so you don't lose any of that moisture Perfect, look at that. And then you'll see that skin is gonna shrivel up. See how it shrivels up immediately when you flip it over. A little bigger. Come on. See how it shrivels right up. And then we're gonna let those cook for a minute. Try to get that skin nice and crispy. Ah, light. Aziz, light, we have light. You can see the fish now. God, looks so good already. I wanna get that skin crispy though. Of course. That's three and then I got two more. The three the better. Aha, as long as it doesn't fall. <laughs> You're like, I trust it, ish. <laughs> really trying to get that crispy skin. And that could take a minute. So that's why you want to sear super fast. So that way, you know, you lock in all that moisture. So that way when you're cooking on the skin, you're not really losing any moisture. And you can see it's steaming a little bit. And a lot of that's probably the butter. So. 
yeah. I'll let you know how it looks when it's uh, crispy. All right, I'm gonna say it's pretty close. So you can see there, you really start to lose the color of the fish. I can still kind of see it, but it's starting to kind of bubble away. And then you know for sure that your skin has gone crispity. And I was going to stop filming, but I just want to get that nice satisfying shot of laying the neck pieces in. It's gonna be audio only. Okay. Audio? Yeah. Or video. video. Um Alright. We got Blippy. Is that what that is? Yeah. On in the background. We got beautiful plate. And we got first bite. This is my first bite. So like I said, I did not debone, but should be pretty easy to find. Skin is nice and crispy. Let's go ahead and show you guys that. And here we go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There's a reason that they call that Lake Michigan candy. Yeah. That's what they call it. Oh, yeah. So my plate's done. He's done being a dad for a second. <laughs> Half a second. Brioche, mushroom, salmon, aioli. Good. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dr. Mushroom. Yeah, that's a pretty good uh, ratio. Mm. I'm calling that a success. It's a good meal. Wow should be quiet for a second i better do my outro uh i honestly ate the bones uh the pin bones didn't even notice them um they're just that small i uh, pretty much bite right through them and when the skin's crunchy you don't even really notice them either um yeah i got some more in the freezer you know i don't really freeze fish but i did because it's coho season and that's what it's like so anyway the usual we thank these fish for their lives and for feeding us and sustaining us and we thank Lake Michigan for its wonderful bounties and uh yeah I'm not done fishing for coho this season but that's my coho catch and cook for Northwest Indiana boy and uh yeah I'm pretty pretty happy with that we'll see you guys in the next one now the girls are getting loud again I'm Chris bye <laughs>